Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a video for the Scrapping for Less February card kit. So the owner, Teresa Russell of Scrapping for Less, contacted me and said that she had a kit coming up that she thought would really suit what I do and um, if you've watched my channel for a while you know I'm really passionate about making and donating cards for kids, especially to the organization Cards for Hospitalized Kids. And that information is always in the video description, and I'll probably mention it a few more times throughout the video. But I just want to show you, start off by showing you the contents of the kit, and also warn you, this is a super long video. It's 36-ish minutes. I am going to be making 21 cards with the kit, so there's going to be a lot of content. But, you know, grab a coffee, be comfortable if you really want to watch. Or, you know, also great to, like, leave on the background as you're crafting. I like to do that. Anyway... The Scrappin' for Less kits come with four different collections, and you just get a handful. I think it's like six pieces of pattern paper from a couple different paper pads. You get a stamp set for each of the little mini parts of the kit, and you get some sequins, some embellishments. This embellishments range. In this kit, there were buttons and stickers. There was like this really pretty gem trim that actually worked out really well and I liked a lot. And each of these in this particular February kit has a sort of princess and fantasy theme. So there's like two very girly princessy collections and then there's two more boyish fantasy collections. Now I do want to mention in this particular one that I'm showing now, there's a unicorn in the stamp set that I have but it's not part of the kit. And that's just because timing wise, in order to get the kits to the design team and me as the guest designer before um, they were released to you so we could make this inspiration, they um, sent us a slightly different set. But I, what I wanted just to emphasize as I show you all of these different components of the kit, this is a pretty good value. When you consider the stamp sets that you get, and these are some exclusives too, like this one here, this little dragon guy, He's an exclusive to Scrapping for Less. So when you consider all the little components you get, you really are getting a pretty good deal. And they're all perfectly coordinated, which makes card making fast, easy, fun. You know, I sat down with this kit. I colored up a bunch of images ahead of time. And then I just played with it. And I was able to turn out 21 cards without almost any effort like I didn't have to try to stretch my supplies or anything like that it's everything coordinates so perfectly and makes sense together um, so I will continue to share my thoughts on that throughout the video but to get started like I said I colored up a bunch of the different images from the kit so each time I start working on a new like mini collection from the kit you're gonna see that my images are already colored and I'm not going to show any of the coloring. That's because this video is already really long and coloring takes a while, especially with some of the images that are included in this kit. They are gorgeous images, but they are really detailed. And so I spent a whole day coloring, which was really fun and relaxing to me, and then another day making the cards. So uh, with this first collection, it has a doodle bug collection paper, like paper collection in it. And then it has this Avery L stamp set. I actually happen to have already owned this Avery L stamp set. So be sure to stay tuned till the end of the video to find out how you can uh, possibly win this stamp set. I mean, if you're going to get the kit, which you should because it's adorable, I mean, maybe it's not much of an incentive for you. But I mean, I have an extra. There's no reason I shouldn't give it away and have somebody else enjoy the cuteness of it. Regardless, maybe you're watching this, you know, months later and the kit's not available anymore or whatever. The kit is currently available. It is release day. My first card here, I'm keeping it simple. I'm using rectangles and I'm just kind of laying them on together. I'm using a, a sketch that comes with the card kit. They, you know, they send you some sketch ideas and I kind of pulled off of that one and I used up all of my stamped images right away making those first two cards but what's great about this collection aspect of it where you get some stickers and coordinating paper and all that is even though I used up my images I still have things that are gonna help me to make really quick cards like there is this 
unicorn sticker that can be a focal point on a card. What I want to mention is despite the fact this video is pretty long, I'm still going to go through each card pretty quickly. But there is a coordinating blog post, which will be linked in the video description below, where you can look at each card and get the measurements and, you know, just kind of see what I did. Because nothing that I'm doing is terribly complicated. It's all a lot of cutting and gluing and not a lot of techniques. So a couple times throughout the video, I accidentally missed stamp on some of my stamps. I do use VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which generally gives pretty good impressions, but I did have a little bit of trouble. It could be because they were brand new stamps, and sometimes brand new stamps need to be stamped a few times for them to kind of be conditioned, but I'm able to fix that with a black pen. So I did want to mention why I kind of flashed that black pen there, because I will fix any sentiment mistakes with it. I'm doing a lot of layering of the pattern paper because once I got started and I was really enjoying working with this kit, I realized that a good goal for me would be to try to use up almost all of the pattern paper from each collection and then I would have just the stamps and dies left over from the kit or like the sort of the non-consumables. I'm also going to use the sketches provided as inspiration, but I'm not going to follow the sketches exactly. So here, one of the sketches had these like triangles at the top and bottom, and I'm creating something similar, but I'm not going to fully go through that sketch. I'm not going to add every element, like there's a flower in the corner. I don't really do anything to mimic that. And I think that that's a good way to approach sketches if you're not one who likes to follow them exactly. You know, um, I know some people prefer not to kind of be told too much what to do in terms of it, but if you still need a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of spark, think about like, what do you like about a sketch or what do you like about someone's card? And just use that one element. Like I thought those triangles were an interesting element, a good movement on the card. So I just use that as a jumping off point. And I think you can do that not only with sketches, but with people's cards. Like if you see a card on someone's blog that you like, try to think about what, a, what about the card is appealing to you and try to just pull off that one thing from the card to create yours. With this card, I'm still going to go back to the stickers and try to use them as a focal point because I don't want to color up any more of the unicorns at this point. Not because coloring up the unicorns isn't fun, because it is, and they're adorable, but um, coloring each image does take a while. The unicorns are actually the easiest thing to color of all the stamps, because the Avery L stamp set has thicker lines than the Stampin' Bella, and can't remember the name off the top of my head, the other two companies that are featured in the kit they don't have as thick of lines, so they're a little bit trickier to color. However, it still would take a time, you know, take a certain amount of time to stop, stamp the images, color them, cut them out, etc., etc. And that's why, in general, I have a tendency to stamp and color a bunch of images and then sit down and make a bunch of cards, rather than trying to make a card from start to finish and, you know, stopping, stamping, coloring each little image as I want it. With this card, I am trying to work with the idea of that visual triangle. You notice I added a two or a star and some heart stickers, and I tried to create a triangle with them. I also used the banana split level sentiment set that came in the kit. There are two levels of the kit, and you can get the rainbow and the extra stamp set and the Mr. Huey's spray as part of the banana split level. And I do use the stamp set from that, but I do think you could also make almost all of these cards without it just because you could substitute other sentiments. So if you didn't want to go full banana split level, but I will say that I really enjoyed the sentiments that were in that banana split level. And I'm a huge fan of rainbows, so having a rainbow die to me is a major plus. I'm just not going to use it for these particular cards because I want to show you what you can do without banana split level for one. And also because I'm focusing on using up the pattern paper and not so much on using, so that, you know, the dyes wouldn't use that as well, essentially, the, the rainbow dye there. So with this card, there was a large sheet of the doodle bug that was like larger than an A2 size card. It was a, a cute little scene. 
And what I decided to do was use that to make a five and a half by five and a half square card. Next up, I am using the other princess collection. I started with both of the sort of girly collections, you know, quote unquote girly um, at the beginning. And I colored the little princess from La La Land Crafts. That's, I remember the name. Um, and I decided to color her in a couple of different skin tones. As I mentioned earlier, I donate my cards. And so I want these cards to represent the wide variety of kids who are going to receive the cards. And um, while I have obviously am Caucasian, I don't want to color all my images that way. And so I'm trying to work on some other skin tones and make sure that those are represented. So I colored each of my princesses slightly differently. Um, for the uh, Caucasian skin tones, I used E0050 and 53, and the hair was E1715 and 13. I did just want to mention that because I do think that um, skin and hair tones are probably the most asked about Copic colors. For the little girl with the more reddish hair, there's a darker haired girl that has more of a black brown hair, and then there's one with a reddish hair. For the girl with the reddish hair, I used E4989-19, and her hair, oh no, sorry, that was her hair. Her skin is E3133-3537. As mentioned before, coordinating blog post, I'll put that info in there as well. And for the last little girl with the darker hair, her hair is W9 and E89, and her skin is the same E3133-3537 combination. I'm going to make these two cards pretty similar. Again, I'm using one of the sketches. And I wanted to, because I knew I was going to make a lot of cards, I didn't feel like they all needed to be unique. They didn't. Um, and these, all these pattern papers that were included are double-sided. So even though I'm using the same design, you know, I'm using a large circle and a little rectangle or whatever, uh, they, I can flip the patterns. And so I can use one side on one of the cards and the other side on the other card and get a little bit of variation, even though they're technically the same design. I also opted to make sure that I use that book design pretty prominently because, again, um, I think of silly little things when I'm making cards. Like I want, you know, this is a very clearly girly collection, um, but trying to kind of see it in the, you know, add some other positivity to it, you know, rather than just being about being pretty, but, you know, also about uh, being smart and reading and, you know, representing different people because a lot of times classic fairy tales do only represent one part of the population, et cetera, et cetera. So I think about silly things like that sometimes, even when I'm making cards, which should be just, you know, um, I don't know just throwing that out there, that I, I have these crazy thoughts when I'm card making. So I am going to make a similar design, but this is more inspired by what was left as scraps. So when I had been cutting up my pattern paper to fit into that first sketch, it left me with some odd size pieces. And I'm going to just work with that and see what elements I can make from it rather than um, cutting new paper each time because with this particular kit situation, you only get a handful of sheets from each collection. And I personally like that because I regularly use up full six by six paper pads. If you've seen my channel before, I have plenty of videos where I use an entire six by six paper pad. So I can do it. But occasionally it's, you know, you get a little bit tired of using a paper pad. And so to only get to be able to get like just a few sheets of a couple of different pretty collections, I think is a really cool thing. I like the idea of these kids. I find them to be more unique than some, like as a unique concept compared to some other kit companies where you're, you know, looking at just one very coordinated collection of everything. But here you're just getting like little samples of stuff. And that's pretty cool. So... I decided to use the stickers included in this collection because, again, I was out of focal points. I used the three princesses that I colored, but I still had pattern paper, so I'm going to still use it. But I'm going to use the crown stickers to add a bit of a focal point, and I'm going to go back to the stickers from the previous collection, the Doodlebug 
Princessy collection, and I'm going to start trying to pull in a few more of those because at this point I figure I've used most of the stickers on that sticker pack and may as well try to get that used up as well. Again, so that there's not so many consumables left and instead I'm just working with the stamp sets and dies as my leftovers, which are then, you know, just a great part of my permanent collection. I love the idea that when you get these kits, you can make all this great stuff and really build your stash at the same time. So again, using up some scraps. I'm finding I have a lot of strips of pattern paper left. So I decided to create a large sort of focal point on my card instead of, you know, having a big square to put my image on or a big rectangle for my image on. I basically create a similar size piece, but by stacking the banners instead. And then again, going back to those stickers. I will say I wasn't a huge fan of the fact that 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 particular sticker had a lime green color and that really wasn't a component of this particular collection. There's no other lime green, but it's not so much that it doesn't work. And again, I am thinking like at the bottom there, I wanted to add just a bit more interest. So that's why I'm going to add the secondary banner. Plus I had the scrap. But I think that um, it may have been better to just kind of leave it there. I think it was it looked finished. But I also had stamped your as sweet as a princess because I wanted to tie in the cake being sweet. But then there was nothing on the card that was princessy. So to fill that space and to tie in the idea of princess, I did add that little bit of crown pattern paper that I had a scrap of so that the sentiment would maybe make a bit more sense because again I think of silly things like that where I'm like you know I really want this to make sense like why does it say you're sweet as a princess on this card and I am only pulling sentiments from the kit stamp sets I'm not going to try to you know go out and find something else in my um, stash that works but I would also say you don't always need a sentiment so now I'm moving on to the uh, more masculine collections, although again, a lot of these cards would be fine for either depending on that child's personal tastes. But this is a Doodlebug Dragon Tales collection, and I am beginning to worry that my footage is messed up because here I am like starting off with scraps. but. I had cut up some of my pattern paper with some ideas of how I wanted to use it. And when you cut up a six by six piece of pattern paper um, to an A2 size card, you get a four and five, four by five and a quarter piece. Then you get a two by six inch strip, which you know if you've watched my like whole bunch of six by six card videos. So I glued those together and that's a great way to make another card panel when you sort of run out. Another little tip here, because I'm not going to explain in detail each card because obviously it's going too fast despite this 36 minute video. Um, another tip I wanted to add, that little um, dinosaur in the egg had a birthday sentiment. And I didn't want a birthday sentiment because while there are card drives that do collect for birthdays, and I actually have a link, I will have a link to um, somebody who is looking to collect some cards including birthdays. Um, a lot of times the organization that I donate to, sorry, the organization that I donate to most of the time doesn't collect birthday cards, so most of the time I don't make them. Um, and I instead just covered up that sentiment with a different one and it, you know, with a little strip of pattern paper. And I think that's important to consider because if you like one part of something and not another, that doesn't mean, it's, you know, you don't need to just throw out that cute little dragon because he doesn't have the right sentiment. Cover up the sentiment. It's still going to look cute. You can make it work with the design and then you can, you know, make your stash work for you. So with this collection came the little exclusive to Scrap and for Less dragon from Stampin' Bella and he's adorable. But again, very fine line. So he was a little bit tricky to color, but he is smaller. So I did color up two of the dragon. However, that did not um, necessarily get that far. It only made two cards, but that was fine because there were, again, stickers from the Doodlebug collection. And I'm going to use those a lot. And the particular pattern paper piece that I got, like of the, of the patterns from the collection, I got some 
that had the cut apart. So I made use of that. I will mention with the scrapping for less kits, you might not get the same exact pattern paper in each kit. And so that is something to consider. I also wanted to stamp the sentiment from the, the kit set. The sentiment says, I'm going to try to paraphrase because I can't read it on my screen, but um, it's from Neil Gaiman, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. He's an author that actually my husband is a pretty big fan of, and it says fairy tales are more than real, not because they tell us that dragons exist, or more than true, but because they tell us dragons can be beaten. And I thought that was a, actually a really good encouraging message, because these children could be facing essentially medical dragons where they are being asked to overcome and deal with obstacles that no one should have to deal with, let alone a child. And so being able to believe in some things that are greater than them, but also to be able to believe in themselves and, you know, is, is pretty important and powerful to them. So I actually thought that sentiment was fitting for these cards, even though it might be a little bit difficult for them to understand. Although again, these aren't necessarily all going to very young children. These could also be going to teenagers. Cards for hospitalized kids, you know, um, serves children from, you know, young children to 18. So as far as I know. So try to think about that too when you're making cards. They don't all have to be like cutesy little kid cards. Some of them should be more appropriate for teenagers. But anyway, I made the sentiment a pretty large prominent part of that card, but I also include the little dragon flying over it because, you know, I think it made sense to include a dragon. But they, they did turn out to be simpler cards because the sentiment was so large. And I got that blue cardstock from the kit. I did not use the cardstock in the kit to create card bases. The reason I didn't do that is because I like to keep high quality cardstock to use for things other than card bases because I buy high quality white cardstock for bases and so I don't feel the need to use the colored cardstock for bases. I just, I, I don't know, it's just a personal preference of mine to use white cardstock for card bases. It's easier to write inside of them and for messages. Um, you know, to read the messages and stuff inside of them. Um, if you're wondering what I put inside of cards for donation, there is a video on my channel about that as well, because I do get that question often when I post videos like this and mention donating cards. Next up, the kit included that cut apart sheet, like I mentioned. So I had all these two by two squares, but a lot of them are birthday themed, which is great if you need birthday cards, but again, I don't. So I am going to use the flip side of all of them and instead create a little pattern here. So this is where the 21 cards came. I was making five cards for most of the little mini kits and that used up the pattern paper pretty well, but there was just some extra paper here. And so rather than trying to cover a card completely with the pattern paper, I decided to leave a lot of blank space, a lot of white space, which works well when you have high quality cardstock. But if you're using really thin cardstock, leaving a lot of white space just tends not to look as good. It makes your card look a little, I, I want to say chintzy, but I don't even know. Like, it's probably a weird word my family uses, but like, it looks a little like cheap and it doesn't show off your design as well. So I really encourage you to buy good card base, good cardstock for your card bases. And it doesn't have to be expensive. I buy mine at Michael's with a 50 or 60% coupon when they have it. And you know, it's $15 for hundred sheets full price, but use the coupon and it's reasonable. Okay, so now I'm going back because this kit included brads and I have not used brads in a while. And I think I got rid of most of my brads, not because they're not useful, it's just that, you know, they kind of fell out of trend for a while. So I decided to actually use them because sometimes I, I do concern myself with the choking hazard possibility, but these are really small and um, will most likely pass through, but they also would, um, they're pointy and sharp on the back. So like not ideal for really, really young children, but they are secured pretty well to the card. Like you'd really have to tear up the card to get them off. Um, so 
I decided to just go for it and use them. There's no explicit restrictions on using it, but I will say if you're donating cards to an organization, contacting them and asking them if they have any rules or if you can use something is probably a good idea. I like to, when using brads, do, or, or sorry, when using small embellishments, whether it's brads, nouveau drops, whatever, create that visual triangle. So that's what I did. I, you know, I uh, created a little triangle around the dragon. But also, I like to just work in little simple stripes, which is the other thing that I decided to do with the brads, is just put a little stripe of brads, kind of like the stripe of gems or pearls that I had used earlier on those princess cards. And then this last one, there was only two gems left over, so I kind of made the triangle include the dragon in my mind. So I'm on to the last little mini card kit of this super awesome jam-packed card kit. But this image was very intense to color. I stamped it out, and again, I chose to make my images, my little people here, not Caucasian. I tried to use some of those same colors from before. So the skin colors I mentioned before are still relevant. Again, will be on my blog in case those are some skin colors you'd like to try to recreate. As I did find it a little bit harder to find sources for, like when you look at Copic skin tones, it comes up a lot of you know inspiration for Caucasian. So anyway, I um, am going to again kind of use the sketch here, like I'm coming back to that as I can, and I'm doing that little like diagonal triangle thing, and I find it a little bit easier to attach my paper and then cut it off than to try to measure things perfectly. So I don't know if you've noticed me doing that throughout the um, video, but I am not going to be one to try to make every cut perfectly because I know myself and I will mess up the cuts. And I'll think, oh, I need it to be one and a quarter and somehow it'll be an eighth inch off or whatever. So back to the image. That image took me almost an hour to color, which you know, coloring can be fun and relaxing, and I do enjoy coloring, but if I had to take an hour to color every an image for every card and I was making 21 cards, you know, it adds up the time there. So I decided to only color one of this image for the video, and then I'm going to add the stamp to my collection and have it forever and ever, and I can color it again in the future after my fingers recover from holding markers for like hours that day because I colored all the other images as well. But it was, again, I, I, I'm just teasing because I actually, like I said, really enjoy coloring. It just, you know, after a while, it's intense. So I decided to use a lot of these little gems because they're all attached. And to me, that's a little bit less of a concern, again, with that idea of like little things being a choking hazard and small parts. And because they're all attached, less of an issue. So I'm going to use them throughout, but when I do use them, I'm going to generally want to pop up the image over them because this is quite thick, these little gems. And so when I stick the image over it, I'm gonna need to make sure that it's popped up so my image isn't all lumpy and bumpy and you can clearly see that you know it's over that. So that's why I'm choosing to use the foam tape where it makes sense. Next up, I again wanted to make sure that I use that book background, encourage reading, subliminal messages, reading is awesome um, for the little kiddos there. But I decided to create two pretty similar cards again because I was, you know, sort of using up, or sorry, <laughs> this is hard to talk this long. I was getting towards the end of the kit and I was a little bit running out of ideas and not wanting to reinvent the wheel every time. So I thought, well, I'll you know use up this kit, but I'll keep it a little bit simpler by using the same-ish design on two of the cards, and I'll use, I'll use up more faster that way. So I'm gonna use up my stickers. Again, your stickers are gonna be slightly different, or might be slightly different than my stickers because the card kit is created by taking pieces of collection. So you might get the top half of the Doodlebug stickers where I got the bottom half. So you're not necessarily going to be able to recreate the cards perfectly. But as we talked about at the beginning of the video, don't worry about following everything exactly, including things like inspiration sketches, because 
that can sometimes drive you nuts. It's not necessarily as fun, but it can, I mean, I, I've done it before too, of course. Um, but, you know, use and enjoy what you have. Anyway, back to the cards. The dragon one was easy. I could just use the dragon stickers that were included with this particular little collection. But then the other side, I had a whole bunch of the Doodlebug stickers left because with the Doodlebug collection, there were cut aparts and other images and plenty of things to use that I didn't even wind up using a lot of those stickers. And I thought, you know, they, they need some love too because I'm again trying to really stick to the kit and I'm not going to color more of those adorable little kiddos right now because it took like an hour. So instead, I'm going to use one of the cute little Doodlebug dudes. And so that's what I did. But I did find it was a bit tricky just because the Doodlebug collection is a lot more brighter. A lot more brighter. I sound so dumb. Anyway, it was a lot brighter. And so it didn't coordinate as well with this collection, which definitely had more muted colors. So even though some of the colors are the same, like there is reds in both and blues in both um, or yellows, they're a totally different tone. And so they look a little bit funny together, and I tried to consider which ones made the most sense together. That particular Viking kind of worked out. I'm again going to use the crowns as an element because the crown stickers were included in my version of the kit. And so I'm going to put three crowns across to again create sort of a focal point here. And I'm also just using up little bits of the scraps that are created. So, you know, once I had one or two solid card ideas that I went with and created first, the next couple of cards wind up just kind of the shapes that I choose for them, as I mentioned before, wind up being based on what kind of scraps that I created. As you can see, most of what I created today was you were able to cut with the paper trimmer. I didn't really use a lot of dies. I certainly could. You could jazz up any of these shapes by cutting them with like a stitch rectangle or like there's like the wonky wavy rectangles from Cat Scrappiness or stressed uh, rectangles and things like that. You certainly could do a lot of that and it could add some interest. I just chose not to, again, so that you could kind of see what could you create truly with the kit. And then I'm going to use another sentiment from that add-on stamp set. Again, you could pick something that isn't from the add-on stamp set. You could pick something from the sort of regular level non-banana split if you wanted to only get the smaller version of the kit. Next up, I, I was feeling like I really didn't have any images left because, again, I just didn't like the way the Doodlebug Vikings looked with this pattern paper. And I thought, I'll be able to stamp a quick dragon. No problem. I can stamp one of the dragons and I can stamp it on a colored paper so that I don't have to color it in. But because the lines of the stamp are so thin, I didn't really like that. And then I started adding some color in, and I'm not really sure that I like how that turned out either because I'm so used to Copic coloring that sometimes other coloring just looks a little bit like messy to me. It doesn't look as easily as well blended and things like that. But I do think that stamping on solid or slightly patterned paper is really fun if you have the thicker stamp, the thicker line stamps. So here are my 21 cards. Um, again, you can see all of these still pictures on my blog, get measurements, all that, and then go get all the inspiration from the other designers who also designed with this card kit. But I like that I have a good mix of cards for different, um, different kids. And, you know, there's girl cards and like more girl and more boy cards. There's cards for kids of different ethnicities. And I don't know, I just felt like I had a really good mix from this kit. And this is what's left of my kit. That's all the pattern paper that's left. It's literally like could throw it in the garbage scraps. But there's also um, all of the stamp sets. There's a few stickers um, as well, and I'll probably hold on to those, but I don't, I mean, I could probably even squeeze another card out of those pattern papers. I know that, but um, mostly, like, I, I feel pretty good having used that. I still have the Doodle Pops because they have a ton of glitter and a lot of card donation places that ask for no glitter. Um, I have, like I said, all of the stamps, including that beautiful little princess and the adorable dragon with his really encouraging sentiment. And so I can go make a whole ton more cards with this, for sure. Um, 
anyway, if you're interested in winning this stamp set because you didn't get a chance to pick up the kit or whatever, head on over to my Instagram, which will also be linked, and that's where I'll be giving it away. But I do encourage you to check out the kit if it's still available. The link will be in the video description. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I briefly mentioned it before, but I do have whole 6x6 six six paper pad tutorials for the two Doodlebug collections that were included. I think it's Dragon Tales and Fairy Tales, whatever those two collections were. And I'll link those in the video description in case you want to see more ideas for those. And I will leave you links, like I said, to the card resources and card drive resources, all the things you can donate to. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.